What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to this channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Mitsubishi Mirage, courtesy of Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because there are actually several pretty big changes for the 2024 Mirage, including Mitsubishi's new two years or 30,000 miles of complimentary maintenance program that's for all their Mitsubishis, but of course Mirage being included in that. And this one actually starts at under $17,000 for the bottom trim level. And we do have that bottom trim level with us here today. So I'm gonna be showing you what you can actually get for under $17,000 these days. Do you also though get America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. But if you actually were to get it at Younger Mitsubishi, I'm just gonna give them this promo yet again. They will give you a 20 year, 200,000 mile powertrain warranty that is valid nationwide. So wanted to pitch that, but ultimately in this video, we'll be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Mirage. First one being the ES, starting at $16,695. That being the one we are in today. And by the way, that's a $450 bump from the 2023 model year, but still under 17,000. So gotta love that. LE trim starts at 17,245. Black edition or BE starting at 17,845. And lastly, the SE going for $18,595. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Mirage is going to be the same. Powering the little beast is a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated inline three cylinder, putting out 76 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 74 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through a continuously variable transmission. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 12 seconds flat. We'll give it a little acceleration test a little bit later in the video, but MPG numbers, get this, 36 in the city, 43 on the highway. And yes, that is better than the Chevy Spark and the Kia Rio as well. And of course, taking regular unleaded fuel. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the Mirage here to the test. Let me get my GoPro set up here and let's see how quickly we can get this one here. Up speed. Here we go. All right, 20, 30. We're going, baby. 40. We're going 50. Hey, all right, 55, stay alive, that'll work. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you'll get used to it. I bet you, you will get used to it. Now, I don't own a Mirage, so I can't vouch for that, but with any vehicle, if you drive it enough, you're gonna get used to it, you're gonna know your limitations, and yeah, having said that, it's certainly not the quickest thing in the world, but it should get the job done. And keep in mind, the trade-off is you get some pretty incredible miles per gallon in this thing, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find nine inch ventilated front discs. In the back, seven inch rear drum brakes. As far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes, that comes in at 127 feet, which is a pretty average number for an SUV. I will say that. So having said that, braking feel is definitely on the softer side of things. So it does feel like it takes a little more push to actually bring this thing to a stop. But having said that, it's not the heaviest vehicle out there. It's a pretty darn light vehicle. So it definitely does come to a stop, but that 60 zero number is not the best. And again, it is a soft braking feel, but that touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear axle. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually, it hasn't been too bad. Now, I will say in compact cars or even subcompact cars like this, you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road and maybe it's because I'm cruising over some ridiculously smooth roads right now in Hagerstown, but yeah, the ride quality hasn't been all that bad, so I haven't had any issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit more on the heavier side of things, which I personally kind of like, so that's not a bad thing in my opinion, so I personally don't have any issues with the steering feel. As far as cabin noise goes, it's kind of loud in here. I will say that, and that's to be expected. I remember driving this car in the past, and especially the engine noise, I'll say that. This thing does get pretty rowdy when you really hit the gas, like now. It does get kind of loud in here and that's to be expected in a subcompact like the Mirage. But touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So rear visibility is absolutely amazing. Probably one of the best out there, quite honestly. 
And get ready for a new feature for 2024 here. Rain sensing windshield wipers now come standard on the LE trim level and up. And rain sensing windshield wipers did not exist on the Mirage for the 2023 model year, but now you get it on the LE trim level and up. So that is one of the new features for 2024. But having said that, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mitsubishi Mirage. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mitsubishi Mirage finished in graphite gray metallic, which, by the way, is one of the two new colors for the 2024 Mirage. Graphite gray is gonna be replacing mercury gray, and then jet black replaces the mystic black from last year, so. Those are the two new colors if you wanted the latest and greatest. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Mirage is actually built. Taking a look at the VIN. Uh, first characters are ML. So I know I had to look this one up last year, but now I know. ML means that this one is built and assembled in Thailand. TDM. So it actually says it on the window sticker as well, which is pretty cool. So made in Thailand. You don't see many vehicles here in the U.S. that are made in Thailand. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. BE, by the way, if I didn't say it already, I think I did. Stands for Black Edition, which adds black accents for all of the chrome accents that you guys are currently looking at up front here. So we did want to start by mentioning that. That Black Edition trim also adds some red accents on the front grille for a little sportier nature, I guess you could say. Halogen headlights do come standard then on all trim levels, but the SE, the SE trim is gonna give you full LED headlights then. So both low beam and high beam. So thought that was pretty darn cool. Automatic feature is gonna come with the black edition and SE trims and then automatic high beams is gonna be found on the SE trim level only. So what that is, is if you have your high beams on at night and it says it's a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them high beams back to low beams. And when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So pretty darn convenient feature there. And you guys could see down below those headlights there, there's kind of a cutout for fog lights. The fog lights are actually gonna come on the SE trim level only. However, they are available on the LE trim, but that's what kind of that cutout is down below, beneath the headlights, I should say. So anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Mirage. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, black window surrounds do come standard. Body color door handles also coming standard. I know it's a given on most vehicles, but on lower priced vehicles like the Mirage, that isn't always the case. So do want to mention that. Body colored folding side mirrors coming standard. You are gonna find integrated turn signals on the SE trim level only with the gloss black finish, of course, on the black edition. But then one of my favorite parts, even without the turn signals being integrated into the side mirrors, one of my favorite parts about the side profile in the Mirage is these JDM turn signal indicators found on the front fenders. So I'll give you guys some B-roll showing that in action real quick, but I love that. That's something like the old uh, Integra Type R's did in Japan and the Civic Type R's always used to do that in Japan. So that is a pretty cool little accent piece in my personal opinion. But then take a look down to the wheel setup, 14 inch steel wheels with covers coming with our ES trim level, of course, 14 inch alloys for the LE, 15 inch black alloys for the black edition, and then 15 inch silver alloys for the SE trim level. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, gotta love that black antenna found all the way to the top there. Just below that rear spoiler with the integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Of course, you have some, please subscribe to the channel and like the video lettering spelled out right there. And honestly guys, do subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, I've been doing this for almost nine years now on YouTube. I cover all new cars when I see them come out if possible. So if you like new car videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But anyways, in all seriousness, Body colored rear diffuser down below. I always think that is pretty cool. And in terms of the exhaust outlet, it is a single exhaust, but there is a chrome tip on the LE trim level and up. But for our ES, we don't have any fancy exhaust finish on ours, but still having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since you are around to the back of the Mirage, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, of course it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. 
Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, so you do get some extra space then if you needed it. There is a cargo light back there. There is a cargo cover that comes standard as well. There is a cargo net that is available, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which, as always, is what I prefer as opposed to the fix a flat. But so then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 34.2 inches. For reference, I'm mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. There is no center armrest, there is no rear charging ports, and there's no rear ventilation. But with the size of this vehicle, I'm not sure you would actually need the rear ventilation, anyways. But then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with all trim levels but the SE. That SE trim level is going to add a cloth leather kind of combo finish, and then you also get heated front seats actually with the SE as well. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's not the best. It's not the best because the seats aren't as adjustable as you traditionally find in uh, just about all other vehicles out there. So uh, for a taller individual, it's not the best. I think if you were a shorter individual, it probably wouldn't be all that bad. But here's why I say that because when in terms of the steering wheel, let's go ahead and cover that real quick. It is tilt. It is not telescoping. So if you're six feet tall like myself and you have to put the seat back a little bit further to uh, get a better driving position for your legs, a lot of times you want the steering wheel to come out to kind of match the leg length. And in this case, you can't telescope out the steering wheel. So for taller individuals, this vehicle might not be the best. For uh, shorter individuals, I don't know, five, six or less, you might be perfectly fine. But anyways, steering wheel is going to be leather wrapped for the SE. It's going to be wrapped in urethane for all other trim levels. So then make our way up to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Mitsubishi logo on the one side. When you flip it over, of course, lock and unlock. Pretty basic key, but it is a turnkey start for all trim levels but the SE. That SE is going to give you a push button start. But in our case, all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so once started up then, when it comes to the gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is front and center, and you got all your warning lights, of course, to the right, but it is kind of a throwback gauge cluster. It looks like it's from the 90s, like uh, driving an old Integra or something like that, which for a lot of people isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's uh, more reliable than maybe the digital gauge clusters that are out there right now. So for that reason, you might not personally mind it. But now let's go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality here so SE trim level is going to give you basically all of the little creature comforts I guess you could say you get things like a leather wrap shift knob and a gloss black shift panel things like that but overall you do get automatic climate control for all trim levels meaning I set the temperature to 73 it's going to automatically hit that for me so that is pretty cool I like that just in front of the shifter you got a little bit of storage you got a USB charging port a couple cup holders uh, behind the shifter you have your uh, old school parking brake there I like that and this little center console that I'm showing you guys here. This is an added option for I think a little over $200. That does not come standard on the ES. So I did want to emphasize that, but we do have it as an option. I will say I used it throughout my entire drive. It is definitely a necessity to have some kind of armrest here because last year when I drove the Ellie, there was no center armrest. But another change for the 2024 Mirage is the Ellie trim level and up now does come with a driver's seat armrest. So I will say, I've been doing this for almost nine years now. I know the manufacturers do watch my videos from time to time. I think Mitsubishi may have seen that one and then added a center armrest just because I said so, because I did gripe on that a little bit. So that is new for 2024, so that is pretty cool. Overall though, interior quality is definitely on the basic side. Another thing I would definitely change, Mitsubishi, if you're watching this one, is the armrests for the doors. They are finished in plastic. Even if you added some type of a soft material like the base Corolla does or something like that, it wouldn't be as hard on your elbows if you're going for a long drive in this thing or something like that so a little bit less plastic at least on the armrest that's all i'm saying the doors are fine you can leave them to keep price down but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here you're going to find a seven inch color touchscreen display coming standard for all trim levels across the board that's going to give you bluetooth and audio streaming but also android auto apple carplay so yes if you have a smartphone you got free navigation on this mirage because you have Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So I love that. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound system, there is one of them and then it comes standard for all trim levels. That's gonna be a four speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. When my tears and knees both fall to the ground. All right. 
if I'm being honest, a little more bass than I expected, actually. Clarity was not the best. I'm just going to say that. But the, more bass than I expected for only having four speakers in this thing. And quite honestly, you shouldn't expect an eight or ten speaker sound system in a vehicle the size of the Mirage. Because this isn't that big of a vehicle. You don't need a ton of speakers. So four speakers is okay. Honestly, wouldn't have minded if they maybe put the SE with six speakers or something like that, just because it is a basic sound system. Clarity isn't the best, but bass was a little more than I expected, so that's good. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Mirage in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard for all trim levels across the board, so you got to love that. Letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety and so start front side side curtain airbags do come standard you get a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection and hill start assist as well then if you were to go with that se trim level that is going to add on top of that a lane departure warning system and so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, this is an extremely affordable vehicle. You get America's best warranty. You get a double powertrain warranty at Younger. Uh, new free maintenance program, that's new for 2024 as well. So that's gonna save you a little bit more money on top of this vehicle being super inexpensive already. You got this cool JDM turn signal indicators. That's something I personally love. As far as room for improvement goes, obviously it's probably the slowest car available right now. So you gotta get used to that. Not that that's necessarily a deal breaker. It's just something you gotta get used to the sound system is basic and the interior quality is basic specifically i want a little bit more cushion for my elbows on the doors but anyways let me know what you guys think of the mirage in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in a new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.